Hi and welcome to this uh, new lesson of this R video tutorial. In this lesson I will show you how to perform a universal clicking on your data using a covariance to increase the, the prediction power of the, of the interpolation. Um, this lesson will be fairly quick because of course uh, I already um, talk about uh, most uh, of the arguments that I, I will show you in this lesson in the previous uh, lesson so if you need uh, uh, to know something else uh, and because you don't understand uh, everything that I explain in this lesson uh, please refer to the uh, previous two for also for this lesson I created a data set uh, which you can find on the home page of the course in this data set you can find uh, a shape file uh, with uh, the border of the area of interest, uh, a data frame with uh, ID, latitude, longitude, and the uh, uh, variable of interest, in this case it's oxygen, and uh, which will be useful for, uh, particularly for this lesson, uh, a Nash grid with uh, the covariance that I will use to increase the prediction power of uh, the Kriging. So let's start R and R commander. Ok, now I'm going to open the script that I used, uh, that I will use for this lesson, is in this folder, you can also find it uh, in the home page of the R course, and here it is. As I, saw, as I said uh, in the previous lesson, the first lines are for um, importing the necessary packages that you will need for this lesson, so I just import it. Now set the working directory, import the data frame, with this line I will transform it into a spatial object data frame, and with this line I will set the coordinate system in UTM 33 Nord. With this two line I import the shape file, and with the second I, I set also for this shape file, the coordinate system. And here it is the ASCII grid with the covariate. So I can just import it and set the coordinate system. As I show you in the previous lesson, um, I need to create a prediction grid for the interpolation. So I'll just run this block of code to create a prediction grid with a 5 meter resolution and save it as a prediction grid.asc and, and now we can start looking uh, at what are the differences between universal rigging and ordinary rigging. Um, the main difference of course is that you need uh, a covariate. So in this case my covariate is the organic matter dot ASC um, that uh, I have uh, already imported in, in R. Uh, then the main uh, thing that uh, distinguishes this uh, Krieging from the previous one is that uh, you need uh, of course to overlay um, the grid with your data frame um, in order to obtain uh, the value of the covariance for each uh, location in which you have an observation. In order to do that you can use the function overlay. Um, so here I create uh, the line of code for overlay the two data set. If you select uh, just uh, the function overlay you can see that um, basically it has uh, the same number uh, of rows uh, as the data frame because of course he has um, overlaid the two so now you have uh, the coordinates which are the same of the coordinates for the um, data frame and uh, a column with the value of the covariance for each observation point so now you can uh, um, 
take this column for the from the overlay object and uh, attach it to the data frame with this line. If you take a look at your data data frame uh, with the function as data frame, so it will treat this that now it's a spatial object data frame uh, as a normal data frame. And as you can see here, there is a new column called org mat because I created it. Of course, you need also to overlay your prediction grid with the covariance because uh, you will need the, the value of the covariance for each point uh, that you need to, be, to predict. So in this case, I can just submit both the line and if you want to take a look at the at the prediction grid, you can just use the function str, and it's it's a special piece of data frame. But here you can see that it has uh, the column with the value of the covariate. Now we can proceed to the fitting variogram section. Um, so let's just first plot uh, the variogram, and the main difference in in this case is that the linear model is this one. Uh, as you remember for the previous lesson, in the previous lesson I showed you that the linear model in uh, the ordinary Kriging case is oxygen uh, and uh, one, because of course uh, it uh, computes the semivariance only for the variable. Uh, in the universal uh, Kriging, uh, the variogram is computed using the, the residual from the linear model uh, between the variable and the covariance that you want to use. So in this case, uh, this is the linear model and the variogram will show uh, the residual of this uh, uh, linear model. So you can just submit and plot uh, the omnidirectional residual variogram. Now I can uh, proceed to create uh, the variogram model as I showed you in the previous lesson, exactly the same line of code. And then I can start uh, fitting the, a model to the variogram. Uh, also in this case, uh, I will fit both the Reml and the ordinary square uh, model. So I can just, uh, of course, you have to change uh, the linear model, but everything else remains the same. So you can just submit this line and take a look at uh, how the Reml model fit your variogram. And apparently it fits it very well, but uh, because I'm curious, I, do, I also want to fit the ordinary least square and submit this line, and there is the ordinary least square model. Now, now I can proceed to the cross validation. Also, in this case, I want to try both uh, model of the variogram, so I will just use the first uh, the Reml model. Uh, and try a cross-validation to see what the results are. So now I have to wait a bit. Of course, it can take some time, uh, depending by the size of your area and the number of observation. Now I can compute uh, the Pearson R square and the root mean square deviation. Now I want to try with the ordinary least square to see if change something or it remains the same. Okay, now I can compute the R square and the root mean square deviation. Basically they are the same. I, I probably use the ordinary least square, but it's just an opinion. Here is the plot of observed versus predicted values, as I showed you in the previous lesson. And now uh, the only thing uh, remains to do is uh, to create uh, the map. So I can use the function Krieg uh, with uh, the linear model that I showed you before, uh, the variogram model uh, ordinary least square and 
the prediction grid that you created in the, in the beginning of the script for the prediction. Submit the line and wait to see. And in this case, as, as uh, you see here, it say using universal cracking. And here you can, uh, with the function spplot, create your uh, uh, prediction map, which is this one, and your error map, which is this one. And with the function jpeg, you can also save your map into a jpeg file. Uh, this is the resolution of the image. Uh, this is your uh, your function to create the image. And you can, if you submit this three line, and you take a look at the folder, you can see that it has created the map, and this map you can use it for uh, publication or something else. So this uh, concludes the lesson about universal Krieging, and uh, it also concludes uh, the video tutorial for spatial statistics.